welcome to the Elizabeth McGowan Training Institute, mmlearn.org. This is a program of Morningside Ministries. Our program today is Tell Me What You Do. And I'm excited to be able to offer this program uh, to you. And I just want to tell you that I'm Maria Wellish. I'm a registered nurse, and I'm also a nursing home administrator. And I have uh, previously presented with you. It's been a little bit of time, and I miss doing it. So I'm glad to be back today to be able to present. I want you to know at any time during this program, if you want to ask a question or make a comment, if you will just click on the Ask bubble at the top of the presentation screen, you can ask a question, you can make a comment, and even when you're watching this on demand, uh, at any time those come into us and we try to get an answer back to you within about 72 hours. And uh, you can always phone in a question, but I will tell you that it's, you'll get a much faster response if you email it in. If you're watching it online, you shouldn't have any problem, but here's the numbers. It is very important to us to tell us what you think, what you want. Your feedback tells us what programs to do, what you think about the programs we are doing. We are constantly trying to improve and to meet the needs of those people who are viewing. So take time. It'll only take you about five minutes, and please complete a survey. Uh, at the end of the program for us. And it does make a difference for us in regards to funding. This eye care webcast, Tell Me What You Do, is going to be an inside look at the role of each of the employees that serve our residents in long-term care and assisted living. These are very important people, and I hope when you finish today you understand more about even your own jobs and how much you contribute if you're an employee. And if you're a family caregiver, I especially hope that this helps to enlighten a little bit and make your process a bit easier. This program used to be called Training Delivered to You, and now the program is called I Care. And the reason is because we do care. I care, and so do all the members of our staff at mmlearn.org. They want to make sure that we're making a difference in your life and the person that you care for. So continue to tune into our I Care series. What made us pick this topic? Well, it's kind of interesting. I was recently at a board meeting, and one of our longtime board members was discussing that he had to go take care of his mom. Uh, and it was across country. I believe it was in Chicago. And he was talking about the difficulty. His mother had been hospitalized, and they told him he had to find a nursing home or a skilled facility rehab to take his mother to. And he said, in addition to trying to find a facility, the issue that he had to deal with was once he got there, he didn't understand what people were saying. And he said, they come up with all this jargon that I had never heard, and it made me really aware. Every facility is different. We call different positions by different names and titles. But I would say pretty much, I think the program when we finish today will give you a broad overview of what people are called and what they do and what are some of these anacronyms that we use. Let's just look at a few of them and think about this if we're employees. LVN, MDS, CMAs, LNFAs, medical directors, RNs, IT, PT, ST, OT, SWs, FSMs. You may not even know what all of these are, but these are titles that we use all the time. And when we finish today, I hope we've covered all of them for you. So we're going to get through the alphabet soup and find out what these folks do. Tell me what you do. Why is this so important? Well, I want to start out and mention to everybody, everybody wears scrub suits to work. Have you noticed? It doesn't matter whether you're the housekeeper, dietitian, CNA, RN, DON. We have folks who are in scrubs. Now, you might be different because we said every facility conducts themselves differently, but this is what I see pretty much everywhere as I travel and when I did consulting. This is very confusing to family members, and I want you to know it's confusing to me. When I go in and I can't tell the nurse from the housekeeper or the um, a dietary aide, I don't know who to go to for help. So what is so important is that we wear our name tags. And this is not a lecture about that, but I just want, before we start to think about this, that most of the name tags I see are turned around backwards with a, a, one of the swipe um, lines on it. And I ask people, why are they always backwards? And you know what people tell me? I don't like my picture. Well, most people aren't looking at your picture because they're looking at your dear face. What they want to see is what do you do and what is your title and what is your name? So please, please wear your name tag so somebody can see who you are and what you do in the organization so that for both all of us, for us and for family members as well. I think it is important when you look at this picture to see everyone who's here that we have folks who are in jeans, folks who are in scrubs, uh, lab coats, suits, 
all of these individuals are members of our team. They're interdisciplinary team members. And they're all important, and it takes every single one of us to make our facilities, our communities, a place of comfort and well-being and to provide the best possible care for the residents who live with us or stay with us. So remember, it takes every single one of us before we start on this road to talking about each of us individually. I want to start with the groundskeeper. I don't think most people think about the groundskeeper being part of our team. But the way our facilities look when people drive up, what you think about when you walk around the building, is so important to people, family members especially, when they first look at us. But I want to tell you for residents, it's very important. This is bringing life back into the inside of their home. And I, I love this because this happens to be an indoor courtyard. But I think when they watch the blooms come on flowers, I think when they watch the bulbs starting to come up and the, the shoots are coming, they're watching the seasons, they're watching the leaves, they're watching the squirrels. The groundskeeper is so important to bringing that life um, to our residents. And I like to think about, this gentleman uh, resides in one of the facilities where I work, and he is so proud of what he is doing. There's no reason that our residents can't still feel soil, uh, can't feel that touch of real earth and life and what makes us all so special. So I encourage you um, to think more about your groundskeepers and more about how we engage our residents uh, with the earth and the soil. I want to tell you a quick uh, story, and this is really dear. I got this email yesterday from one of our executive directors who was telling me that she had a funny story for me. And it was an email that I received, and I was on the road when I got it, and I just had to put it in today. And it said, we did walk a mile in each other's shoes several years ago. We drew names and then had to shadow the person you drew the name of for a morning or an afternoon. We allowed a month for everyone to accomplish this task so that they could best work it into their schedules. Then we got together and talked about what we learned. The funniest was Michael, the driver, had to shadow the beautician. He said he was amazed at how when the resident came in, it looked like they had very little hair. And when they walked out, it was poof, magic, and they had a lot of hair. And that's what I think about beauticians. I think they're magical. And they're part of almost all of our facilities. I want you to know they do more for the self-esteem for our residents than almost anything else that we do for them. I also want to say to family members, if you're watching this, that it's really important for you to give us an idea of how your mom or dad wore their hair. Very difficult for a beautician to know that um, your mother didn't wear her hair like Lady Bird Johnson or that she did. A good photo is always a good start. And somebody coming in from the hospital or somebody who's had uh, maybe a fall or something else that's brought them to us, that their hair is kind of plastered to their head, we don't know. For the CNAs and the nurses, I want to tell you, we have to be so careful for family members that when, uh, and the resident themselves, that when they have their hair done on a day is not the day to go into the shower room and wash their hair 45 minutes after they just had their hair done or even the same day. I've never had a perm in my life, but I have learned from very angry family members what happens when you wash hair after a fresh perm. And I have seen that happen in facilities where somebody's just gotten a perm it was the residence day to be bathed, went right into the shower, and a perm was ruined, and a beautiful hair um, cut was ruined as well. I do want to mention to you, too, this is a great time after somebody has their hair done to grab the camera and take a picture. That's your best day. And uh, what a nice way to be remembered or be on the bulletin board is right after you got your hair done. I wish um, I had somebody who would do my hair for me. So uh, congratulate our beauticians for all they do, and remember they're vital to our team. Activities coordinators are so important to our residents, and I want to always say, if your activity coordinator isn't having fun, there's nobody having fun. The activity coordinator is the person that has to generate the excitement and really has to get to know a lot about the residents. And I will tell you that the only way that they get to know about the residents is for you to tell them what they need to know. Every day, people should know what's going on. So today, at whatever facility you're at, you want to let people know exactly what are the activities. And if you're a family member and you're looking to on the activity calendar for the day to see what's going on and you come in and that activity isn't happening, I want to tell you that that happens sometimes. Don't think that that happens every day. Surely, if it becomes a consistent problem, you want to deal with that. But I will tell you, activity coordinators have learned that they have to be flexible.
Because just like you and I, many days the residents aren't going to get into a certain activity that was planned and they want to do something else or stay on with something they're already doing. But make sure that you have a varied calendar. I always say there should be as much active involvement by the residents as there is passive. And we'll look, take a look at that. And here's a resident looking at her activity calendar, deciding what she wants to do. An activity calendar should be big enough for the residents to be able to read. And if it's on a whole month calendar, it may be too small, and we might have to print those out as a daily event. These are things going on that I love to see that the residents are dressed up along with the staff, that we make that possible. This was just a recent Mardi Gras that happened. But like I said, if the activity coordinators aren't having fun and they're not engaged in this, they can't be bystanders. They have to be actively involved. This is active involvement where people are actually doing something. And here's something with yoga or Tai Chi. Um, guest musicians, that's passive where you're sitting and you're watching. And of course, um, the proverbial bingo, um, the activity coordinators always tell me, don't take away bingo from the residents. I say just don't have too much bingo. Because I want to go to the point of if you're a family member, and I'm going to say if it were my husband, an activity for him would not be bingo, and it would not be arranging flowers, but it would be shining his shoes, and it would be watering the yard, and it would be polishing a brass buckle because he was a military guy for so many years. We have to know the history behind people, and that's why activity coordinators are such an integral part of our team. And for the rest of the team, we have to get the residents to the activities to be able to participate. But if you want to ask a question or make a comment, remember, go ahead and ask that by clicking on the Ask button at the top of the presentation screen. And at any time, you can call in a question to this number, or um, remember, you can send one anytime to me at info at mmlearn.org. Now we're going to move on to the laundry. This is always an issue for families. And I have to tell you that when I was an intern, I worked in the laundry, a uh, large laundry, at one of the facilities where I was at. And I have to tell you, I was overwhelmed by this job. It is a difficult, difficult position. And yet, this creates a lot of consternation with family members. Most family members never get a tour of the laundry. We never think to take them to the bowels of the building and look at what's going on. Well, I want you to take a look through these photos and see the folding and look at the mounds of towels and washcloths and pads and, and tablecloths and bedspreads. And this doesn't come down to the laundry clean. Let me tell you, this is a messy job. And these are wonderful people. This is a laundry supervisor, and I look at this bucket that is in front of me with all of this clothing, and we sometimes wonder, how did mom's sweater get lost? How did mom's sweater not come back to her? Why is it on someone else? To help the laundry staff, everything needs to be labeled. And I tell family members, get one of those indelible um, Sharpies and put your family member's name on the clothing. With the hundreds of people, and even if you're in a small facility of only 40 or 50, this can still be a real problem.